In the 2009-2010 season, Liverpool legend Fernando Torres suffered a torn meniscus injury. This injury had affected Torres's knee prior to this season and can be seen as a contributing factor to his decline at Anfield. Despite his greatness, after these string of injuries, Fernando Torres was never the same. He had lost his explosiveness that he had in his early years. And as a result, when Chelsea offered 50 million to Liverpool, they were inclined to accept. This view is universal in the sense that players such as Gerard and Carragher, who are legends in their own right, have come out saying that Torres was never the same after the injury and they could not refuse such a deal. If you don't know me already, my name is Matthew Faisa and I'm a medical student from London interested in sports medicine. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy sports and injury analysis content. And also check out our videos in the past on Santi Carzola's Achilles tendon tear which nearly has ended his career as a result of needing an amputation and more Liverpool specific videos on Daniel Sturridge's decline as a result of injuries and also Mo Salah's greatness. If we look at this 3D anatomy model we can appreciate two C-shaped spongy structures in the knee joint known as menisci. The meniscus is a structure which acts as a cushion between the femur which is the thigh bone and the tibia which is the shin bone. There are two menisci in each knee joint and these can be torn in sports that require quick sudden movement and rotation of the knee however are frequently common in the everyday population with the Boston Medical Hospital for Children claiming that they receive 500,000 meniscal tears in the general population in the US. The meniscus can tear in many different ways this depends on the physical appearance post injury to detect what's actually happened the most common presentations involve a bucket handle tear, a flap tear and a radial tear. In Torres' case and in the case of other footballers, the most common way to injure your meniscus perhaps would be through a hard tackle where there is forced rotation of the knee causing it to go out of its natural plane. However, in the general population where not everyone is getting slide tackled or being aggressively forced off the ball, the most common way to injure meniscus would be if you have a pre-existing injury or something such as osteoarthritis and you participate in movements such as the squat. Something as simple as this can lead to a minuscule tear in over 30s in particular which are considered a risk factor for this type of injury. Regarding how Torres would have felt when playing it all depends on his pain tolerance. If we remember the function of the meniscus which is to act as a shock absorber and a cushion to the knee joint kind of preventing the tibia and fibula rubbing against each other, once this degrades, this would increase the likelihood of knee pain and swelling and stiffness in particular. As a result with the injury, Torres would have felt every step he took with no shock absorber in the knee and would have had increased trouble when running. Regarding the management of minuscule tears, much like any other injury in sports, there are two ways you can do it. Either you have active rehabilitation where you use physios versus more physical management of the injury in the form of surgery. In Torres's case, after an unsuccessful spell of rehab, he was sent to Spain where he had the surgery. He had something called arthroscopic surgery, which involves the use of a camera for the surgeons to look within the knee and allow them to physically repair the torn meniscus. Sometimes with injuries, if they happen in the general population, surgery would not be used due to its various risks. However, with the club applying pressure to get their players back, and Torres trying to get fit for the World Cup in the summer where he won it with Spain, surgery would often be used to help speed up the process and find a quick fix to the injury. Regarding the procedures Torres would have had, the surgeons would have two possibilities and two options. The first being a meniscectomy, which is the partial removal of the cartilage. And this would take typically three weeks to heal. The other option would be a complete repair of the meniscus, which would involve part attachment of the meniscus back into its original place. This takes slightly longer in three months to heal. However, perhaps would kind of maintain the structural integrity of the meniscus and provide better long-term support for the knee. In the overall picture to see whether surgery is better than active rehabilitation for this injury in particular, with the management of the torn meniscus, there has been inconclusive evidence to suggest surgery has any benefit. As a result, Perhaps the active rehabilitation management would be better as the meniscus does have self-healing properties to allow it to kind of return to its structural integrity without the need of physical intervention. As a result, surgery 
may perhaps not be the best case scenario for athletes due to the various risks. However, perhaps these risks do not take a front seat and time and effort of the club do. The reason active rehabilitation would be such a good possibility with this injury in particular is that the outer third of the meniscus has a rich blood supply, meaning it can self-heal and return to its structural integrity. This cannot occur in the inner two thirds, which has an inadequate blood supply, meaning an injury to this region would perhaps mean that it's unsalvageable and would then require a meniscectomy to physically remove it as it has no chance of healing back. So the management of a meniscus in the general population, in summary, will typically involve its position. If it's on the outer third where there's good blood supply, then active rehabilitation would be used versus the inner two thirds where there's an inadequate blood supply, meaning it can't heal back and therefore would require surgery to physically remove it as it serves no particular function being in the body. This injury alongside a myriad of other injuries Torres suffered during his time at Liverpool and prior meant he never really returned to his world-class form after leaving the club. Prior to leaving, he had been nominated by his peers as the best striker in the world and would be part of the World XI for the last two years. However, after this, he was never able to reach that form. For the statisticians among us, Torres scored 81 goals in 142 matches playing for Liverpool. However, after 2009, when he left the club, he played approximately 374 games and only scored 88. As a result, there's a clear disparity in terms of the goals he scored and his effectiveness on the pitch pre and post injury. Despite his long line of injuries, Torres was still able to have an illustrious career, winning the 2010 World Cup with Spain in the summer and also the 2012 Champions League with Chelsea after scoring perhaps their most important goal in the semi-final against Barcelona, where he was one on one on the counter from the halfway line and maintained composed enough to finish it with ease. I hope this video helped decipher and hash out some of the information behind Torres' decline at Liverpool and more specifically his torn meniscus injury. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And also check out my most recent video on Santi Carzola's leg injury, which nearly ended his career and cost him his foot. And also more Liverpool specific videos on Daniel Sturridge's decline and Mo Salah's greatness. Apart from that, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time. With melon in course, hair course, my skin, soy sauce, I'm boisterous. I bun with your babes and feed the oysters. Oysters, man, think that they're hot like raw mustard. More time is sweeter than sponge cakes and birds' custard. Fix your posture. I must have been 16, another cute buster. In court, they had told me about the custer. Wasting time instead of grinding harder than you can, you muster. Bye bye, the rules of stacking notes and making bands of sorts. I think there's so 